Hello there guys, Feng Fur here and welcome to Neo Scavenger. Hey, I haven't seen nothing from this for a while. So yeah, I did the first impressions of this game back in February and it's been coming on quite well actually from what I can what I've been playing there. So it's gonna be a lot more casual. I've got my scratchings and my cider. So yeah. Might be a tad little bit tipsy as well, so I'll just bear that in mind. So this is gonna be a lot more casual. Now I'll fully show I I can't remember the first impressions very well, but I, there isn't obviously an options menu, this is the options menu. And while there has been some new stuff added, um <laughs> there's no ten eighty and my, my monitor isn't thirteen fifty. I'm like, ah why? <laughs> why give us that and then don't give us a ten eighty? Really weird. Uh, if you say, well, there's full screen there, yeah, yeah, it's full screen, but it's black bars. So, no, thank you. Right, let's start a new game with this. Now, um, how I used to play, I used to play very aggressively. Whenever I was in battle, I used to attack a lot. And that's the wrong thing to do, because that will actually end up getting you killed. That will, that will be the one thing that will kill you. It won't be nothing else. So, we're going to be really tactical about this. So, firstly, what we're going to do, we're going to take, uh, we'll take trapping. Trapping's pretty useful. We'll take botany. Very useful for getting food. Uh, we're going to take lock picking. Very useful to, for getting into buildings. Actually, don't know if I should probably get there or not. My choice is something else other than lock picking. The last time I used lock picking, it wasn't as useful as I would have wanted it. Maybe me metabolism. Yeah, let's get metabolism. What else have we got? Hiding medic. Oh, hang on. Get rid of that. Let's have tracking. What's eagle eye? Can see one X further than normal. Light and line of sight permitting and can detect hidden things easier. Hmm. Let's have eagle eye as well. There we go. Let's go with that. That seems like a good idea. Ability to hide more effective. Camp concealment stat visible on camp screen. Hmm. Let's get rid of tracking. And go with hiding instead. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. We could have randomized it as well, but, you know, that's cool. So this is completely changed as well, the first star. I mean, when you first started before, all you could do was break out, but now you have to think about something else. So you wake up disorientated, slumped over the base of an empty uh, chiral sleep pod, still damp from chiral fluid, or chiral fluid, or whatever you want to pronounce it. I'm going to call it chiral. It's probably what it is. The thick dust from the floor clings to your skin, leaving a clean spot on the ground, where a large five is painted. Across the room there is an open door to the hallway and a broken window leading outside. Just as you gather your wits, an unearthly scream erupts from down the hall behind the doorway. Something is coming, and fast. Got a few choices here, we can just go straight away and jump out the window. Or we can hide, find some place to hide, or use the knowledge of plants. Now you might think, well what the hell is that going to be useful for here, but we're going to use it. Just watch this. Okay. A plant catches your eye as you scan the room for supplies. Uh, Rickinus communus, the castor oil plant, is growing in from the window. You remember this plant can be highly toxic, and most animals will avoid it if possible. Break it off some branches, you quickly stomp on the leaves and seeds, rubbing the fragments on your feet and hands. You scatter the rest on the doorway just in time. The predatory dog-like creature comes to a halt as it reaches the doorway, sniffing the plants and shaking its head in disgust. You thrust your hands towards it, and it steps back further. Obviously, only interested in your toxic scent. With one off, it pads down the hall, looking for more prey. Okay, we've got a few choices now. So we could again just go straight the window, or we could search the console for records, which is what we're going to do. Okay, so we check the console for any patient info and come across three records. Uh, tank one has got a load of crap. Tank five, which we were in, Philip Kindred. That's our name. Okay, there's nothing there, there's, just, there's only billing info. And some of a dude by the name of Lloyd. Blank check. Uh, there's got his billing info there, interesting. <laughs> now, we could use Eagle Eye to notice details as well. 
Let's do that. Something catches your eye as you scan the room. Obscured in the shadows behind tank 2, it looks like something small and metallic is lying on the floor. Upon closer inspection, it appears to be a multi-tool pocket knife, probably left behind by a maintenance personnel ages ago, and no one saw it since. Whoever left or it here, whoever left it here, you're pretty sure they don't need it as much as you, so you decided to take it. That's interesting. I've, I've never actually took Eagle Eye before. Of course, we've got our first weapon. The inventory is still roughly the same. So, you still got your hands, you have your clothes when you actually find bloody clothes, you got your backpack compartment, when you find the backpack, and your necklace, and I think that's a bracelet or ring. Anyway, we'll just confirm that. Now we're going to jump out the window. Okie dokie. Yes, I've played this before, just not on this computer. Right. Okay, so we start off here. We're pretty much okay. We're still well fed, we're well hydrated, well rested, unburdened, comfortable. Outdoor temperature is actually pretty low, which is a problem. One of the props the most um, the most common form of death in this game is due to hyperthermia. Because of the outdoor temp, you just can't find shelter quick enough, which is interesting. Okay. Let's see if we... It must be pretty dark as well, considering we can't really see a lot. So let's move over here. Okay, let's move over to this one. This one's got items in. Let's have a look what items there is. Um, why can't I... How come there's no thingy? There's no search. Oh, it's over here. That's why. That's actually really weird, because... Um, yeah, it's weird. It used to be on that side. At one time, I'm sure it did. Anyway, let's have a look. So we've got marsh there. We can uh, also look at our conditions. This is one thing I never actually went into detail on in the uh, first impressions. When you get bruised and cut, it actually shows up on your body piece. And what you can actually do is if you've got bandages, you can actually manually uh, bandage them up and stuff. It's pretty cool. And of course your camp area. It should also be a crafting and the yeah, it's there. What I can do if I wanted to, I could put that there. I don't know if adding these will actually help in any way. I know some uh, stuff can only be crafted with using skills, but for the time being it just looks like I can't. So, yeah, we could confirm this and get water, but it's pointless at the moment because, well, we're still hydrated. And it looks like there's not really any items on the floor, apart from obviously the marsh itself. So, okay. Now, why can't I... I can't move. There we go. Can I centre that? I'm pretty sure I could centre that before. That's weird. Hmm. Interesting. Okie dokie. Let's carry on. So, we should probably be covering our tracks a little bit as well. That's something I uh, forgot to mention. Uh, obviously, enemies roam and whatnot. So, your tracks can actually be... Uh... Wow, there's nothing around here. Wow. That's kind of crap. We've now got moderate hyperthermia. Now that is a problem. So we are going to eventually die of the cold. We need to find somewhere very quick. Unfortunately, we haven't found anywhere yet. There's nowhere inside that will actually help us with our predicament. There still isn't. Mmm. We're going to die of hyperthermia. Just because we can't find anywhere. Aha! Okay. Might be okay now. Might. That's a big might. We have very severe hyperthermia now. Now we need to be careful. As you approach the town, there is no sign of activity. Buildings stand in ruins. Vehicles are overturned and blackened with fire. Explosion marks radiate outwards from walls and pavements. In the distance, uh, strange looking creatures circle the sky like monstrous, lovely vultures. The world has drastically changed from what you knew. Some sort of cataclysm has befallen Earth, uh, returning mankind to the Dark Ages. And along with it, your hopes of finding a warm meal and some answers. You decide to look around and scavenge what you can find from the ruins. Mmm. Pork front. Lovely. Right. Let's scavenge first. I know it's a scavenge. Hock off. Alright. Let's put the shed in. Okay. You know what we can do? Is we got a decent we got a decent chance of finding loot here. We can do it fairly safely and 
we might not be spotted. I can actually go to hiding and that's going to increase it a lot. However, our chance of loot is going to be very slim. At this point of the game, I just want to try and find loot. Because we need it. Ah, brilliant. So we found stuff. Ah, we found two right feet. Joy. So, yeah. Put one on that one. Can I actually put that one on that one? Nah. Of course you can't. Oh, can you? Oh, you can. You'll probably walk a bit funny, though. Alright, let's just take it off. Well, I want sh and nah, now we'll, we'll keep it on. We'll keep it on. Fuck off. We'll keep it on. We've got a weapon now. Another weapon. I don't know which one's better, actually. The crowbar or the uh, pocket knife. Crowbar might be a bit more... Hmm. I could always keep the pocket knife uh, somewhere else. Ah, we've got jeans. Right. Take that off. This will sort out most of our hypothermia issues just by actually keeping warm. Uh, take that one off, actually. Put the brown t-shirt on and then put the hoodie over. And we've actually got a bit of storage space now, which is always good. Is there anything else? Scrap of paper it reads, shards, one medium bright ridged object. Which we don't need, so screw it. Now this hospital going, I should be able to um, salvage, actually. Let's see if we can salvage something out of it. So we should be able to make some clean, oh no, with the dirty rags, that's a shame. That's a bugger. Clean rags are very hard to come by. Very hard, and that's what you need to actually, um, to um, to heal heal your uh, wounds, so you make them into bandages. Hmm. weapon is a crowbar, and hiding is false. Okay. Ten to turn. A player is barefoot. Ten cannot travel as easily. Well, you can now. You you got your you got your feet on. We're hyperthermic. If there's anything else we can do, there's nothing else to scavenge here, by the way. Uh, which is unfortunate because we haven't even found a sleeping bag or anything. Don't know if we can craft one. I don't think we can do what we've got here. No, I don't think we can. Hmm, looks like it matters to go out in the wild and try and find um, something else. If I go south, I can have a look over the hill. It gives me a bit more range, so why not? Here we go. Okay, if we go out, go with that. There we go. Um, let's just come and go in this one. Enough moves left. That's a shame. We might have to we might have to use our fingers, our skill soon to try and get water and air food. Stop bringing that up, thank you. Much appreciated. Aha! That looks very pleasing. And turn. I'm still well rested, so that's good. However, I'm starting to get very hypothermic, which is not good. Which means I need to try and find shelter as soon as possible. There's actually a shed in there as well, cool. Okay. Firstly, well, I probably should have hid my tracks on that square. Bit pointless doing that now. Right, let's scavenge. There's only one thing to scavenge here. Now we can use a crowbar, which will increase our chances at loot. However, our safety is compromised, and so is our sneak. If I went hiding, uh, man, I'm not really fussed. In fact, uh, having a battle might actually be more beneficial than you might think at this point. Although, us being very hypothermic, I'm um, not really, don't really want to do that. But yeah, I I just want loot at the moment, so we might. No, no, we we're good. Yes, that was right. You did see a shopping trolley. Unfortunately, it's just a basket. Uh, I don't know. I don't actually know how you can actually wield these or not because it's always red. Whenever I highlight any particular section, it's just red. So I have no idea. What else have we got? We've got a plastic bottle. Now, unfortunately, don't fit there. Do we have a plastic? Ah, a disposable plastic bag. William. Let's put a bottle in there. That will allow us to, that will allow us to um, actually get uh, liquids in there. I will also take this string. I haven't, I don't think I've crafted anything with uh, the string yet though. To, for it to be beneficial, but hey, you never know, you might, you might find something. 
Uh, so we can actually make shards from that now if we wanted to. Um, hospital vist, nothing there. Caster wheels, I wonder if we can put these caster wheels on the uh, shopping trolley. Uh, might just be one short. <laughs> Typical. Okay, whatever. That's fine. Uh, we can't search anything else. Right, I wonder if we can. Sl we can't even sleep it really because we still haven't found something like a bag, sleeping bag. We need a sleeping bag to keep ourselves warm. That's my main concern. I mean, I could sleep. Let's just see how we are. We're very concealed. Shelter's not great. And yeah, I wouldn't be very alert. So let's be careful of that. Could I sleep in the shopping cart? Nah, well, it was sleeping in the shopping cart, which is. <laughs> I probably could, but no. Right, let's. Uh, I think the shed might be the next best place. There is actually tracks here, which I want to be careful of. I'm going to end the turn, and I'm actually going to cover my tracks here. Go into this one, end turn. Uh, unable to see well. Hide the tracks. Oh yeah, it's going to cost even more turns now because we can't see very well in the conditions. It's quite cool that um, that's like that as well. Little random events like that. Okay, let's try and scavenge. We need to find something. There's a shack in the forest um, that apparently doesn't have much loot. Oh boy, this could go wrong. Yeah, we still haven't come across a battle yet, which is good. Ooh, a crab up your strap. Not 100% sure what that actually adds to it, but screw it. I want, I want a crab up with a strap. Maybe it stops you from getting disarmed as much. It's, you know, it's a fair, fair point. Cardboard box, is that more than that? Wow, it is. Cool. Let, let, let's lend your cardboard box around. That sounds like a good idea. I don't know if that's more encumbering or not, but... Hang on, there's six there. Yeah, there's only four rows there, isn't that? Yeah. Ooh, there's a rifle scope there. Cool. I'll take that. Ooh. I'll take that. Pebbles, there's water. Which we'll put in the um, bottle. And trees! For tree people. Okay. Unfortunately, there's not really much else. And I think I might have to eventually go to sleep because we are giving. No, we're fine. We're not that bad. Mm. Oops. Never press escape. <laughs> Never press escape. Doesn't do uh, exactly what you want it to do. But right. we searched that one. We haven't searched that one yet. We haven't searched this one yet. This one's the closest. Actually, I don't think it would matter whichever way you go. Hmm. Gorgeous poor country. Player, you can see again. Thank you for telling me that. As night falls, you notice there is a bright glow coming from the east. Vis easily visibly through the, the treetops. It's no guarantee, but it could be a sign of civilization. Maybe even a lead on where you are or who. And with nothing else, it's a good landmark stroke as any. Mm hmm. Okay. So here's our map. The glow's coming from all the way up there. Southeast. Indeed. Don't think you can have, it doesn't look like you can um, zoom in, which is kinda weird. But we've already gone quite far from where we were. And it looks like there's another place to search now. So what I've noticed as well is that sometimes uh, locations can be researched after a while for uh, the, there's different buildings there. I'm not I'm not just sure how or why it works like that but it's cool okay battle so someone spotted me while I was here joy now at the moment he's got a couple of conditions strong and tough that means he can do more probably deal more damage than me and he's also tough which means he can take a lot more punishment however he's barefooted whereas I've, I've got a bit of an advantage over that so I've got a little bit more maneuverability Pulling a basket awkwardly as well is not very good for him. So, this is great for me. I'm actually in a pretty damn good position here. Now, we're seven feet away from each other. Now, I think you can start attacking when you're in range of one, if I remember correctly. There's low cover. Uh, the weather's pretty drizzly. 
it's night and the terrain is treacherous. Now, this could be a very big advantage for me because I've got trapping as a skill. And if I can see any decent, um, any anything decent on the floor that I could use to try and lure him into, like say spikes or glass shards, shard, glass shards, then yeah, that'll be pretty cool. But for the time being, I'm gonna take cover. Okay, so he's gonna, he's actually moved towards me a little bit, and that's it. Now I'm gonna start advancing under the cover. Nowhere in range. Well, was. Now I'm going to lure him. I've actually got the lure there. So it tries to use the environment against the target. Moves one space away from the target. Chance to knock down target and make them lose one turn. Chance to damage target. Must see target. Target must see you. Bloody, bloody, blah. It's really, uh, it's really in intense, the, uh, the combat is really. Okay, so player lures radio into a trap. Player is exposed to easy attack for a moment, but then obviously the raider is as well. And he's also already bruised. Now, we're still not in range yet properly, but he's going to recover. And he's probably gonna, the first thing he's probably do is have a whack at me. So I'm going to start, I'm going to ready to dodge. So there we go, player dodges raider's attack. Player is dodging out the way to make them hard to hit for a moment. Now, it looks like he's actually backed away a little bit here, so I'm going to slightly advance. Okay, now Raider's got up. I'm going to try and lure him into a trap again. See if he's stupid enough to do it again. And it looks like he is. That's brilliant. So, player lures Raider into a trap. Player is exposed to easy attack for a moment. Raider needs a moment to recover. Lower left leg was grazed. His upper right arm was scratched. And his right leg was smacked. And he's also bleeding now. This is great. I haven't done anything yet. However, I am a little bit vulnerable. And we are in free range, which means he can probably attack me. So I need to dodge. There we go. So, yeah, they did, just didn't do anything. He's actually backing away again, which is weird. I can lure him again. This I haven't actually had this many lures before in one battle. But let's see if he does it. Yeah, he fell for again. Brilliant. It must be. It must be. Uh, it must be a different trap. Clearly. But yeah, we have Raider needs to recover, and his upper chest was bruised. Still vulnerable now. I think I'm going to advance one square forward and see where it goes from there. Yeah, the raid is still there. He's still... Well, he's bleeding now. Alright, let's parry. I'm going to parry. There we go. Okay, so player parries. Raid's attack. Raid advances towards player. Okay. Now, this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting. Now, we're in melee range of each other. I'm still parrying. And that's what I'm gonna keep doing. I'm gonna keep parrying. Because he's gonna attack me this turn. So there we go. Player parries Raider's attacks. Raider's attack, not attacks. Raider charges at the player and the Raider is exposed to easy attack for a moment. That's when you strike. When they're vulnerable like that, that's when you strike. There we go. Player attacks Raider and hits. Player bruised Raider's upper chest with a crowbar. And of course the Raider tries to attack the player but misses. Okay, and now he's still vulnerable, so if I wanted to, I could try and attack him again. However, I might try and lure him again, since he's right there, so I might as well. Here we go. So, player is exposing to his attack for a moment. Raider has fallen to the ground and must regain foot to continue. Raider, ne Raider needs a mo moment to recover before acting again. His lower chest was scratched. Raider attacks player and hits. That's a shame. But yeah, that's that's the only problem when you're in melee range by that time. If you try and use a trap, then you more likely will get hit. And it's not necessarily a smart idea. So my left arm is attacked with a punch. Nothing much other than that. Right. Gotta give it a dodge. So there we go. Player dodges Raider's attacks and player is dodging out of the way. Okay. Now he's fallen. Brilliant. Now's a good time to smack him one. There we go. So a player tries to attack the red but misses. That's a shame. So we're in two range now. So I think we should be able to lure him to a trap again. So yeah. Let's do that. There we go. Player lures right into a trap. Uh, Red is up at right arm was grazed and lower stomach was scratched and he's still bleeding. He's also fallen, so I can go ahead and pelt him one. Uh, I hit him in the in the head. Wow! I can pelt him. Oh, I, actually, I shouldn't probably pelt him again. He has actually got up. 
So let's uh, let's parry. There we go. So Raider tries to um, launch a flurry of attacks at player misses. Raider needs a moment to recover. Time to strike. There are other options, of course. You can run away and fall back. You can also threaten. Sometimes it will scare them away, and you can even demand surrender if they are either losing or if you're just going to blatantly kill them. Sometimes they accept, and sometimes they don't. You know, as things go. Um, I've stopped using melee surge for a couple of reasons. Now, the problem with melee surge is that it, not only does it knock you out for a turn, it, you know, you, you actually automatically lose the next turn, but you, it's also very unlikely that it hits. Most of the time when I've tried using melee surge, I actually miss, and I end up losing two or three turns because I get stunned right after. So, yeah, stop using that. Okay, so player attacks Raider and hits guy's lower chest with a crowbar. Now, I'm tired. Because obviously all this running around and la de la. Raider is bleeding and Raider is in severe pain. Is ev uh, is having trouble concentrating. Cool. Now, I need to... I could probably... No, I'm in range of one. I need to dodge. Okay. So... Raider at unfortunately attacks player and hits unfortunately it actually gets my upper stomach. Uh, that's a shame, isn't it? Okay, let's try and dodge again. Actually we're in range of two, so I can lure him into a trap. Go back there. Here we go. So our player lures Raider into a trap. Raider's lower left arm was grazed and his lower chest was smacked and he's now coughing up blood. And he's also very vulnerable. Time to kick his head in. There we go. Bruised his head with a crowbar. Let's go again. There we go. Raider actually charges at the player, but he's tripped. And he's fallen. And I also whack him, twat him one with the uh, crowbar again. And since he's still fallen, we can twat him with the crowbar again. There we go. Unfortunately, um, the Raider pulls me down. And my lower stomach was bruised. And I'm also exposed to easy attack for the moment. Now he's still fallen, so we've both got to get back up. That's what, exactly what we do. Now I'm going to parry straight away. There we go. Raider tries to attack the player but misses. And he's now exposed. What do you do when he's exposed? That's right. Smack him on with the crowbar. There we go. Raider's now unconscious. He's fallen to the ground and must regain footing to continue. Raider has passed out from unbearable pain. Great, I've got, a, I've got a couple of choices now. I can choose to loot him. And check the body for loot. Uh, checks for a, and a, a, checks an unconscious or dead body for any useful items. Empty into the ground. Must be in mid range, must see a target. Same penalty as excess in inventory. Problem is, is that sometimes it just doesn't flat out work. So we're going to kick him in the head until he's dead. There we go. So his lower chest was smacked, he's now bleeding, let's smack him one with a crowbar, and he's now dead. Has died due to acute bleeding in the lungs, well it's his own fucking fault for trying to attack me. Now I'm in pain, I have actually did take a little bit of a damage there, which I shouldn't have. I'm also tired, I also need a drink. But let's see what he had on him, he must have, he must have had some pretty damn good goodies. Ah, he had a sleeping bag, brilliant. He also had some, um, some berries on him. So let me uh, let me try click that and empty that out. I can eat these. Let's eat them. There we go. I think I can eat them anyway. I've got that. I've got the bot bot botany or whatever it's called. So yeah, should be able to. A humanoid corpse weighs an awful lot. Apparently, it's got a value of one dollar. That's a shame. That is only worth that much. Ooh, painkillers. Yes. So, in fact, I'm actually going to use a painkiller, and that can fuck off. Uh, immunity system is... Oh, was that antibiotics? Oh, amoxicillin. That was probably not the wisest of uh, things to have actually consumed. Then there's a pair of binoculars in here. Let's take that. Didn't have a, he didn't actually have anything that great, which is unfortunate. But we need water. So let's eat the, eat the water. Yeah, let's eat the water. And we can still scavenge if we wanted to, which I probably will end up doing. I am tired though, so maybe it might be best to actually go to sleep. 
So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide tracks, then hide, and then go to sleep. So we need the bag right there. As you can see, it's going to give us um, a bit of sleep. Shelter is going to be okay. Concealment is obviously out there in the open, as one would expect. Uh, we can either rest until wounds heal, or we can go to sleep. Uh, caution your defenses when sleeping. I might just rest and heal, actually. There we go, and that's why. <laughs> so, they haven't actually seen me yet. That's one thing to bear in mind. There, there is actually quite an interesting uh, sneak system in the game. So, because I was resting rather than sleeping, I actually spotted this. So that's something to bear in mind. Now I can try and retreat hiddily. Now he's got an hunting rifle. So what I might be more interested in is trying to get that off him before he actually kills me. So if I sneak towards, I should actually I should probably hide in cover first. Now he's seen me. Okay. But I'm hard to hit now. Right, and I can advance under cover. Which is what I'm going to do. Okay. The raider charges at the player and he's also exposed to uh, easy attack for the moment. Okay. Now, do I advance again? Yes, I will. Okay. Player advances towards Raider under cover. Raider tries to tackle the player but misses and then he falls to the ground. I'm going to stamp him in the fucking head. <laughs> wow. Um, so I kicked him. I kicked him in the lower chest. Uh, unfortunately, the Raider does pull me down. Uh, my head was bruised um, and I'm exposed to easy. We both need to get back up, so let's get back up. Now, I got up first. He's still falling. So I can sm I can twat him one with the uh, crowbar. There we go. So Raider rolls from the player's attack. I oh, still hit him now with in the in the lower stomach. So that's cool. And he's still falling. So I'm gonna twat him again. There we go. Player player attacks Raider and hits. Raider unfortunately pulls the player down to the ground. My right arm was bruised from that. Let's get up. Yeah, we're both up. Now, time to do some dodging. There we go. Uh-oh. Raider headbutts the player. The player's head was smacked. The player has a concussion and is somewhat disorientated. The player is stunned and unable to move for a moment. The player is in minor pain and some activities are affected. Uh, needs to manage to recover and I fell to the ground. Oh, man. That's bad. Raider attacks the player and hits. Now, I need to try and knock him down with me at this point. I'm also weary, but I did manage to get him. So we both now he's got up, I haven't. I need to roll dodge the way, and I'm dead. I passed out. As a player has died of a severe traumatic brain injury, has died due to the acute bleeding of the lungs. I've never been, I've never died of two symptoms like that at the same time before. So I feel special. <laughs> ah, bollocks. Disposition, survivor. Oh well, let's try again next time, eh? Of course you will.